COVID-19 is a pandemic of respiratory disease spreading from person to person caused by a novel coronavirus. The severity of the situation demands a strict intervention to be implemented. Recently, an article was published in the Indian Journal of Medical Research titled Prudent Public Health Intervention Strategies to Control the Coronavirus Disease 2019 Transmission in India, a Mathematical Model-Based Approach. The findings of the study are the authors graphically evaluated the situation and if we plot a graph wherein the y-axis corresponds to the number of cases of COVID-19 reported and the x-axis corresponds to the number of days it took for those cases to evolve. With the evolving understanding of the natural history of COVID-19 infection, it was assumed that all infections would go through an asymptomatic stage lasting three days on an average followed by a symptomatic stage also lasting three days on an average. Talking about the Indian statistics of the cases, the first 50 cases took about 40 days to be reported. The next 100 cases were reported within a span of five days, the next 150 cases in the next three days, and the next 200 cases took just two days to be reported. So this shows an exponential growth rate in the number of cases of COVID-19. The apex of the red graph is the epidemic phase, which can be taken at an average of 10,000 cases. So when the cases reach a total of 10,000, that would be the stage of an epidemic. At present in India, 469 cases of COVID-19 have been reported with 10 deaths. According to WHO, the fatality rate stands at 3.4% and if the cases continue to grow in the same exponential way, then in India by May, we would have 1 million cases with 30,000 deaths. In the present scenario, we just have 0.5 deaths per 1,000 people. So if the cases go on to increase at the present rate, it would completely overwhelm the health system of the country with no more beds available for the ones infected. The authors proposed an optimistic model based on two stringent implementing methods, which are entry screening of travelers with symptoms suggestive of COVID-19 and strictly implemented social distancing. Such measures could reduce the peak prevalence substantially, thus minimizing the pressure on public health services. As a consequence, the intervention has the effect of flattening the epidemic curve, distributing cases over a longer duration than in the absence of intervention. In the optimistic scenario, 50% of symptomatic cases within three days of developing symptoms would reduce the cumulative incidence by 62% and the peak prevalence by 89%. Cumulative incidence is the total number of cases and peak prevalence is the maximum number of cases. Coronaviruses are well known to be particularly resilient in terms of where they can survive. As COVID-19 has spread, so has our fear of surfaces. In an article recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine titled Aerosol and Surface Stability of SARS-CoV-2 as Compared with SARS-CoV-1, their data consisted of 10 experimental conditions involving two viruses, SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV-1 in five environmental conditions such as aerosols, plastic, stainless steel, copper and cardboard and estimated their decay rates using a Bayesian regression model. The authors found that SARS-CoV-2 remained viable in aerosols throughout the duration of the experiment for about three hours. Fine droplets between 1 to 5 micrometers in size about 30 times smaller than the width of a human hair can remain airborne for several hours in still air. SARS-CoV-2 was more stable on plastic and stainless steel than on copper and cardboard. According to the researchers at the Rocky Mountain Laboratories, the absorbent natural fibers in cardboard may cause the virus to dry up more quickly than on plastic and metal. The authors concluded that aerosol and fomite transmission of SARS-CoV-2 is plausible since the virus can remain viable and infectious in aerosols for hours and on surfaces up to days. So the next question poses that if the viability of the two coronaviruses is similar, why is SARS-CoV-2 resulting in more cases? 
According to the authors, emerging evidence suggests that people infected with SARS-CoV-2 might be spreading virus without recognizing or prior to recognizing symptoms, which would make disease control measures that were effective against SARS-CoV-1 less effective against its successor. Secondly, in contrast to SARS-CoV-1, most secondary cases of virus transmission of SARS-CoV-2 appear to be occurring in community settings rather than healthcare settings. Recently, the WHO introduced the five steps to kicking out coronavirus campaign. The five steps are hands, elbow, face, distance, and feel. Let's talk about them one by one. Hands. Wash your hands with soap and water. If your hands are visibly dirty, wash them with soap and water for about 30 seconds. If they are not visibly dirty, wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds or you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% of alcohol. The second step, that is elbow. Flex your elbows when coughing or sneezing and cover your mouth with your hand and use a tissue or you can use the upper sleeves of your garment. Dispose the used tissue in a covered dustbin to prevent further transmission of the infection. The third step is face. Do not touch your face with unwashed hands. Avoid touching the T zone of your face which include the eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed hands. The fourth step is distance. We even saw in the previous study that implementing social distancing measure helps us tremendously to bring down the epidemic curve. Avoid social gatherings. Maintain at least a distance of 1 meter from an infected person as well as among each other. And the fifth step being feel. If you feel symptomatic, that is, if you have difficulty in breathing and dry cough, then immediately contact your medical care provider. Wear a mask to prevent further transmission of the infection to others. According to the CDC, the virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close contact with one another within about six feet and through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. In order to protect yourself and others, in addition to the previous points, you should wear a face mask if you are sick when you are around other people and before you enter a healthcare provider's office. If you are not sick, you do not need to wear a face mask unless you are caring for someone who is sick. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces daily. Stay home if you are sick except to get medical care. According to the CDC, the people at risk are, but not limited to, are pregnant women, older adults, people with asthma, people with HIV. Current estimates from Imperial College London are that the death rate is almost 10 times higher than average for those over 80 and much lower for those under 40. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces daily. These include tables, doorknobs, light switches, countertops, handles, desks, phones, keyboards, toilets, fauché and sinks. If surfaces are dirty, clean them. Use detergent or soap and water prior to disinfection. Wear disposable gloves to clean and disinfect. Additional key items to clean hands include after blowing one's nose, coughing or sneezing, after using the restroom, before eating or preparing food, after contact with animals or pets, before and after providing routine care for another person who needs assistance. According to the CDC, the unexpired household bleach will be effective against coronaviruses when properly diluted. To make a bleach solution, mix 5 tablespoons or about one third cup of bleach per gallon of water. One gallon is about 4.55 liters. Or for a smaller quantity, you can use 4 teaspoons of bleach per quart of water, which is about 1.13 liter of water. Take care that never mix household bleach with ammonia or any other cleanser. You can also use alcoholic solution with at least 60% alcohol for cleaning and disinfection. As a precautionary measure, use gloves and make sure you have good ventilation during use of the product. So this was about the current scenario of COVID-19 and the precautionary measures. More shall be known as more updates are available. Till that time, take care of yourself and your family. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.